the, the Polish doctor or the Irish couple, and they're, they're getting what they want, and they're getting it good and hard because they're finding out that when, uh, w- when you call for fascism, anybody can go to Gulag. Yeah, anybody can and will go to Gulag, and one day it might be you, but before it's you, it's probably going to be a, f- a few friends that you're going to be very surprised. What's interesting is it's catching up now it's not just catching up the you know the Mexicans and the Haitians it's it's catching up the Polish doctors <laughs> yeah so it's it's coming after a whole lot more people than than any of you imagine would on that note we are going to by the way if you're watching the YouTube channel version of this video you missed about the first 6 7 minutes of the show so if you want to see the full versions of the show, you're going to definitely want to go over to Facebook, Google, or do a Facebook search for Liberty Principle Facebook page. And there is a link in the YouTube description. And be sure that you watch the show when it airs live Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're, especially we're, on Thursday. Well, yeah, especially, <laughs> especially on Thursday. Of course, I, I'll say that on Monday, too. <laughs> and Tuesday. And so Wednesday. you want me? You want me to do the the theme song for starting the show officially? Oh, the shorter leash. Or we're gonna do the shorter. No, leash. no, no, a, no. Oh, you have a theme song for the show? Yeah. Okay. Gas I, pump, give, sugar tax, fear of nuclear attacks. <laughs> it is daily. I don't know. Tide pods, yoga pants, status of the union. We didn't start the fire. <laughs> yes, we didn't start you heard the, the fire. You, you, heard, you heard the yoga industrial complex yesterday, right? Oh, yes. That was a good segment. That oh, was my a God. Good segment. That was, I, I, I read that. that was, I, I, I prepared for that story. Like, I haven't prepared for any story, and I can't even tell you how long. That's how well, hard I prepared for it. And I was still so dumbfounded by the stupidity of it. I think this... Really, the next two stories that we're going to do in the short release segment, I think that they, they're they almost at that level. Not quite, but they're almost at that level of stupid. So I'm so, going to hit... Let's do it. I'm going to hit the bump here for the... the we, we start off with the short release. So bear with oh, us. Oh, oh, oh. Our course of association shortening the leash on their pets. We cover stories of the state. The government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. I'm assuming that you poured over these two stories. You got all kinds of stuff on this. (laughs) Well, actually, I read uh, I read everything today. I, I am oh, really? 100% prepared. Wow. You're probably more prepared than me, even though I wrote a lot of the things that you read. <laughs> I probably am. <laughs> so we, we're, we're going to do two stories for the short leash. And I had a, a dickens of a time picking which one. And I ended up picking the France story. But we're going to do the UPS story, too, because you have a personal connection there. So let's 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 get to the France story. So first off, if you like your nanny state, you're absolutely you can keep it. Well, <laughs> you can keep it, or you can move to France. <laughs> Actually, if you like, you stay, you stay if right you like your at. nanny state, you can keep your nanny state. <laughs> yes, and this time they will keep that promise. That is a promise that they will actually. If Obama had stood up and said, "If you like your nanny state, you can keep your," it would have been yes. Absolutely. He kept his promise. So what what they've done is they're working on passing new regulations that would prevent food sellers from making buy one, get one free offers. So in the regulation, it would be part of a larger farm bill. Now, <laughs> this is this is a part that I don't get. And I'm going to say this, and I think you have something to say, and I'll let you for the uh, – there's a comparison to be made – in America, in American times back in the day, that maybe you'll, you'll, you'll talk about here. But it's, it's been proposed that this move will enable retailers to, and this is their quote, trim their margins 
and thus be able to pay producers better. But as you and I know, because we have a basic understanding of economics, sales are a way to sell more product. If you prevent people from doing sales, especially a sale like buy one, get one free, that's a pretty effective sale. They're not going to sell as much product. They're, the people aren't going to buy as much of it. What happens when less people buy a product? Uh, less revenue? Well, the price goes down. So then the retailer is selling the product, since they can't get as high a price, they're going to end up offering the farmers... They're going to have to offer them a lower price, and the farmer's going to decide whether that's a price that's good enough for them. And if it's not, they're not going to be able to negotiate. They're just going to have to get into a new line of work. So that's that's what they're doing in France. But you were telling me there's there maybe America kind of went down this road. You you know what I'm talking about with the new Yes, year? yes. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it over and over again and at and not just next semester. So the the story of this, because of the concern is that the farmers want to make more money off of, uh, off of their product. So they want to charge a higher price to the retailers. And the government, by implementing price controls, which was done during the Great Depression under the Agricultural Adjustment Act, is under the impression that that the, that the the producers will make more money off of this but what they're failing to realize just like uh just like the idiots during the great depression the central planning committees here in the ussa what they feel to understand is pricing is a signal uh the law of su supply and demand says that when the price of something goes up that people pay people will buy less of it uh that's the whole point that they say that they talk about when they have uh, sin taxes. They say that sin taxes are meant to discourage purchasing that product. But simultaneously, they also say that the purpose of the sin tax is to generate more revenue. So they're going to get more money off of the things that people aren't buying. Because... <laughs> uh, it's, it's not a good business model to raise no, the no. price so that people will buy less, but that's your source of revenue. It's right. <laughs> So, so the Something's plan here not gonna match up. So, so what happened during the Great Depression under the AAA was the government was slaughtering pigs left and right. Uh, there were a total of six million pigs that were that were slaughtered, uh, just thrown into like wood chippers and, and just destroyed. And that was to decrease the supply that was available. Now, keep in mind, this is during the Great Depression when people are freaking hungry and they're unemployed. And they can't afford to pay more for all this food. So after a little while, people were taking a dim view because good food was being destroyed. And, and they took they started, a dim view of that? That's shocking. Yeah. Well, the, the, the common man did. The, the, the person who had some degree of common sense still within them. No, well, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the general public. I'm not talking about the planners. So as as people were freaking out over over uh, good food being destroyed at a time when people are hungry, the the government idiots decide that they would pay the farmers not to produce. Good move. And this, th yeah, so this this was not just uh, uh, meat products, but also uh, crops. And interestingly enough, the uh, the government was going to have the crops plowed over. So they're going to have the, the the donkeys that pulled the pulled the plows. They're going to just zigzag through the crops and just destroy them like that. And what they didn't realize was that the that the donkeys had been trained so well to walk in between the rows and not through them they wouldn't that dig. they they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. So it turns out that the jackasses in the field were much smarter <laughs> than the jackasses in Washington D.C. All that just for that line. You know, it was all about that line. You you worked oh, right a, up to it. It, 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 it is out. always about that line. Always about that line. <laughs> Have no doubt about it. So anyway, uh, fast forward a little bit, and, and people are getting PO'd about perfectly good food being destroyed. Uh, all, all this. Oh, they wound up burning the crops later on because uh, the donkeys were smarter than the politicians. But yeah. anyway, so they started paying farmers not to produce. In, in order to lower the supply and keep the cost up. And I'm glad they're not the, doing that anymore. 
Yeah, and, and then the the headline shortly after that read, uh, 500,000 Negroes out of work because of uh, farm layoffs because it was predominantly, predominantly black folks that were working as farmhands. See, w- when, you, when you own a farm and you're being paid not to produce, you have a tendency to let your employees go because you're – you're smarter than the government. You're not going to pay people not to work. Yeah. So the the government will pay farmers not to work, but the farmers won't pay farmhands not to work. I do want to add a totally irrelevant comment from one of our viewers, Craig. Craig! He, Hi, Craig. By the way, he is also known as Voltrog. I use some of his music for some of the things that I have. He's also Hi, Ann. He, he put this comment out there, and I think it's a challenge, and I think you should meet it. I want to see Lou in his yoga pants. That I'm not necessarily saying I want to see it, but I would like to see people who see it. That's what I want. I don't want to actually maybe, see maybe, it. Maybe in the off-the-leash segment. <laughs> okay. We, 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 have a, we have a new viewer tonight, Well, one that I don't think has been here before. Her name is Anne, and Hello, she's Anne. very special to me because I have known her since junior high school. She was like a sister to me at one time. Well, welcome, junior high school friend. Welcome to the show. Has she crossed over from State of Unstate Facetopia into Anarchotopia, or she's still? Oh no, not not even close. Not even close. Not even close, close, Anne. Well, welcome. Welcome. I, I, I think she's a Democrat. I haven't rubbed off on her yet. Well, you shouldn't be rubbing off on people without their consent. So that's, <laughs> so anyway, that's a starting point. So this is what so, they're going to do in France. In What they're going to do is they're going to essentially enact legislation that is going to have the exact opposite effect. It's going to end up driving the price down. And then the retailers will end up paying the farmers less. Rather mm-hmm. than just... Yeah, letting letting the market go and see what happens. You're not you're not going to fix the problem with central planning, like like you said in the very beginning. That price point that is that is the key uh, measure. That is the the only honest measure that you have when you're talking about the market as to should I invest in this? How much how much time, money, energy, re- resources should I put into producing this product or service? You can look at the price and you can determine. You can look at the price that it costs to produce the product or service and you can pretty quickly assess whether or not that's worthwhile pursuing. If you you remove the price point, you can no longer predict that. Yeah, and the same thing goes for the consumer. The consumer has to ask, okay, should I buy these building materials here if the price is high? Is your operation going to be profitable enough to sustain the higher price where lower prices are usually a signal that there's a surplus of these goods and that's a good time to buy. But when you have the market distortions, uh, in this particular case, the price controls, I have a, I have a great little joke about price controls. Uh, a a guy goes into, well, you're going to hear it. A guy goes into a butcher shop and says, I would like, or he says, how much is, uh, how much is your steak? And the guy says, Oh, ribeye. It's it's twelve ninety nine per pound, and the the customer gets shocked and says, "But but there's price controls. You're not allowed to sell it for more than seven ninety nine per pound." The guy across the street he has it for seven ninety nine per pound, and the butcher says, "Well, why don't you go buy it from the guy across the street?" And the customer says, "But the guy across the the guy across the street he's all sold out." And the butcher says to the customer, he "says You know what? When I'm sold out." I sell it for seven ninety nine a pound. Also, <laughs> so there you have it. That's yes, that's, exactly. That's it's funny and it's informative. It, oh, wait, wait till you hear my joke for the for the UPS portion. Hi, Tom. My buddy Tom has Tom, uh, joined in. Yeah. How, how do you, he, how do you see them joining in? I don't see them here. Am I missing oh, something? I'm, I'm, I, I have the other laptop going, and I'm on the I'm on the broadcast page. So I see people showing up. I see comments. Oh, uh, Shane not... Lackey says Shane Lackey says Wolf. Yep. Uh, I Greg, saw that. Craig wants to see me in the yoga pants, and maybe yep. in the off the leash segment. Maybe. I don't... Emily and Brian are here. Hi guys. I'm voting against the off the leash uh, 
yoga pants thing unless I don't have to see it. I told you, I don't want to see you in yoga pants. I want to see the expression on people's faces when they see you on the yoga pants. That <laughs> well, I don't would actually be have, worth it. I don't actually have yoga pants. What I have are some long johns that I can put on. Well, that'll... I'm going to move but on. I, you'll notice that I am wearing my, my lumberjack shirt, so yep. support the, the plaid flannel line. I saw that. I saw that. That was great. Yeah. I saw the support that because because actually they actually do risk their lives every day. Yeah, it's it's probably the most dangerous industry out there, and they I don't want the most dangerous industry up. was the uh, the fishermen out in the Alaska seas. Those guys, but they were the most. They had the most dangerous jobs. I don't really know. I don't know who has the most dangerous. I, I know that logging is, is way up there, though. But anyway, let, let's uh, move on to the UPS. Cause... Well, well, if we're going to, I mean, we should have something for the fishermen. I think they should be like the, the rubber line because, you know, they wear the rubbers. And so maybe su support the rubber line. I support just the slicker rubber line. line. What's that? Support the slicker line. The slicker line. The, sl the rubber slicker line. Support yeah, because that big raincoat that they wear, like the Gordon's fishermen or yeah, the or the or the, the the killer in in one of those uh, teen movies, uh, it's it's a slicker. But anyway, okay, so we're gonna support the slicker line. But while we do that, we're gonna go on to this story. Now you actually have, well, I'm I'm gonna set up the story for you, and I'm gonna set it up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit from what I wrote because I think this is important here to set this whole thing up. So, so Don Quixote went around jousting windmills to no avail. I don't know if you know anything about Don Quixote. Uh, he's a fictional character, but he warms the cockles of my heart. And it was this, this fighting windmills was uh, such a pointless act, even though it was a fictional one, that the word quixotic has come into our lexicon. Now, for me, go ahead. What was the point of of jousting the windmills? What was what were they going to stop? What was uh, he planning to stop? The grinding of the the wheat. Okay, the windmills. They're they're mills. They're 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 replacing the folks that are grinding it by hand. So he took my job. He took my job. So so to be quixotic is it, it has this connotation. I'll give you the real definition, but it's it's essentially. You're fighting against something that you cannot defeat, and you do it with passion and vigor. I mean, the actual definition of quixotic is, is quixotic is dictionary definition, exceedingly idealistic, unrealistic, and impractical, which, by the way, describes most government ideologues. As a matter of fact, I think it <laughs> describes all, doesn't it? Pretty much all government <laughs> ideologues. So... So let me add to that. If Go you want to change the system from the inside, you had better be Mexican water because you ain't going to do it as a politician or an activist. That's right. So why am I giving the etymological root of the word quixotic? Well, really, just so I could use the word etymological on the show and sound smart. No, that's no, not the only reason. So this word and even the etymology behind it, especially the etymology behind it, defines the efforts of the Teamsters Union that are attempting oh, yeah. they're attempting to negotiate a contract with UPS that would prevent it from using drones and autonomous vehicles. That's right. They're trying to negotiate a, a contract with the Teamster with uh, UPS that will guarantee that UPS will not anytime in the future, I don't know specifically whether it's forever or a certain period of time but they will not use drones to u do use drones for deliveries nor will they uh, use autonomous vehicles which are coming online there's the autonomous vehicles are definitely they're just around the corner at, in, in a practical level so to me what I see from this Lou this is a fundamental, I understand that workers and owners and managers have different interests. And I have no problem whatsoever with free associations. So if you want to freely associate into something called a union, and you want to have the strength of that union to negotiate with the owners and managers of whatever company 
you're working with so that you can get the best deal possible. I got no problem with that. Where I do have a problem, though, is when you're negotiating a deal that will fundamentally hurt the company. If you haven't made the connection that the profit of the company, the continuance of the company, is something that is essential to your employment, then you're, you're an enemy. You're actually an enemy of the company. You're working against the interest of the company. I, I would fire you. Mm -hmm. And you're also working against your own interest and the interests of your coworkers. I, I worked for UPS for seven years. And when I had hired in there, it was a, the stock was privately held. So the only people that could purchase it were employees. You couldn't go on any of these online trading platforms or you couldn't call your broker and buy stock in UPS. You, you just couldn't do that. It, it, it didn't exist. It was a privately held company. Eventually, the stock went public, and this is something that had been predicted for quite some time, but then it, it, it finally happened. And there were 35,000 new millionaires across the country when this happened. Now, of course, most people are saying, well, that must have been the, that must have been the management. That must have been the, the, the big guys, the, the white shirts, the insiders. You would be surprised how many drivers – Delivery drivers, the over-the-road feeder drivers, the ones that the ones that would drive the semis with the fifty-three foot flatbeds, uh, the the folks that would that would do the doubles going down the highway or triples on the turnpike, those drivers, uh, people that worked on the inside, were stockholders. Many of them had been with the company for many many years, and when the employee stock ownership option came about, they took advantage of it. So that's why there were 35,000 new millionaires across the company, and not all of them were in management. As a matter of fact, there were some drivers that were I – mean, they're, they're darn near tyrants of stockholders. Uh, they were the first ones to step into a room and turn the light off if nobody was in there because that was – that was Because they I appreciated seriously, that bottom line yeah. all of a sudden, right? Well, well – they they took an ownership stake in it. As a matter of fact, I had a I had an employee that was I, he was a very poor employee as far as his attitude and everything goes, and I I was talking to him and he's like, you know, what should I care? I I just make my hourly wage and blah blah blah, and I said, all right, well, you know what, you're eligible for the stock purchase program. Why don't you sign up for it? That way you can have a piece of the action. And he's like, really? And he, he signed up for it. I don't even think he understood what what was going on, but and he signed up for it. And all of a sudden, he, he starts taking the ownership principle. Now, the union the union didn't build that company. The union didn't invest in it. The they union didn't, didn't create. Yeah, they didn't create what it is today. The unions go around to already existing companies and say, okay, we're going to be like the government but a little bit more violent. So anyway, you have, uh, you have, you have the union going in there saying that, well, we have our, our, our job is to preserve the jobs of our members. And I can appreciate that. Uh, but what they're sure. doing is what they're doing is the they're fighting against, I can also appreciate yeah, that, but, but they're fighting against progress. And I'm sure you know the word Luddite, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, the def definition of that is a member of any of the, Bands of English workers who destroyed machinery, especially in cotton and woolen mills that were that they believed were threatening their jobs. So they were uh, also says a person opposed to increased industrialization or new technology, uh, then, a small it, a small minded Luddite resisting progress is the example that they use. I think so in in the, in the Netherlands or Holland, in Holland, they resisted uh uh, mechanization of various forms so they would take their wooden shoes off and they would throw them in the machines to break the machines their shoes were called sabots and it's where you get the word sabotage mm, interesting, interesting so just like the just like the buggy whip makers that were worried about the cars destroying their jobs the automobiles in the late uh, 19th century early 20th century these people are fighting against progress. Now, granted, people aren't making buggy whips anymore, but how many how many of us out here really want to give up on our on our automobiles and go back to riding in horse drawn carriages or having our goods delivered to us in horse drawn carriages? 
The Amish do. And well, actually, they don't want to go back to that because they never left it. Well, that's but true. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure that the <laughs> common man out there doesn't want to do this. No, I do. So I do, I do what's not happening, want this and, 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 and something that I saw when I was at UPS was when, when you're dealing with, let's say, um, cross-country uh, um, uh, shipment of goods. So let's say in, uh, going from Detroit, Michigan to California, that's a very long drive in a, in a trailer. And the, the way that UPS is successful is they create what we're called direct loads. So they will get, they, they want to have as few handles on the package as humanly possible. So they'll, everything is going to, uh, Southern California, they'll send to a, a hub out there and it'll get distributed from there. They'll send that from, from Detroit or from whatever the origin sort is. And by sending it out there and by not unloading that trailer every 50 miles, resorting it and loading it, loading it back up, they're saving the labor. So they're getting a quicker delivery. That's how they can, that's how they can guarantee that, uh, the time and transit on a package is going to be X number of days. Now, when it comes to driving, that's an awful lot of driving. So what they will do is they want to use the rail system. So these flatbeds will get loaded up and they'll get put onto rail cars. Well, the union has been resistant to having uh, having trains pull these these trailers, you know, having uh, tra- having the the trailers on the rail cars and going by rail out to Arizona and California and all these different places because that's taking away from jobs. Well. If you if you have more people driving and you have fewer trains pulling this stuff, that raises your cost. Just like we were talking about in the very right. first segment. And so, yeah, and I mean, and the people that well, hopefully that they would keep. I mean, they're going to lay some people off, and the people that they would keep would be the the folks that are doing the quality work. So that would also improve their bottom line. Well, well, here's something else. If you look at all the gains in technology through the 20th century, because the 20th century has been the the real industrial age. I, I know it started in the in the in the early 1800s, early to mid 1800s. Yeah, mid 1800s uh, when it really yeah. started to pardon the pun, it, pick up steam. It, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got it. it. <laughs> wow, you're such a you're such a steampunk. I but know. anyway, hey, I actually love steampunk. So yes, I am. So. The, the 20th century is where the real innovation came in. That's that's where the, the robotics and everything else came in. Now, what you have to look at is with the with the new technology in the in the mid 1800s, the factories, the machines, things like that. You now, the things that people were throwing their wooden shoes at. We did not wind up with a big, giant, massive unemployment. As, as some jobs went away, new jobs came about. Machines may have replaced cotton picking, but building machines replaced cotton picking also. So you had a you had a whole lot of things going on. If if there's if there's only a certain base number of jobs out there and new technology destroys them, and then also you have to look at the at the nineteen fifties where women started going into the into the workforce. If if you if you look at the growth in population, if you look at women entering the workforce, if you look at all these new or all these jobs that were destroyed by new technology, the unemployment rate should be ninety nine point nine nine percent. But well, it's not. It's not. I, and let me give you an example. I give you a really. I'll give you a recent example. So, the the internet rises. 1994, Timothy Berner Lay, whatever, however you pronounce his name, he invents HTML code. HTML code is hypertext markup language. It's it's really what what enabled the internet to become what it is. Most of what you see uh, has some element of HTML to it. So the internet began to enter into the commerce field. And the worry was immediately, well, what's going to happen is if the Internet rises and more and more people buy their stuff online, it's going to put brick-and-mortar stores out of business. It's going to cost some gerbs, cashiers, uh, well, anybody involved in brick-and-mortar 
retail. I mean, even you're you're still feeling the effects today. A lot of the companies that you know, like Sears and Kmart, and a lot of these the, these uh, big retail department stores, they're they're kind of they're losing to the internet, and so all these jobs have gone away. But what's interesting is the internet has created jobs and it's created mm -hmm. jobs. If somebody came up to you in 1996 and said that there was going to be this thing called Instagram where people are going to post pictures of themselves doing weird things and some of these people were going to develop a following and they were going to have such a big following that companies would pay them to mention their products. They're called influencers on Instagram. There's a lot of people making a lot of money doing this, this type of work. You could never predict that that job would have been created. I, I'm actually involved in search engine optimization. You would never, ever have been able to predict a job like search engine optimization. So the, the drones and the automated vehicles there's going to be industries that are going to sprout around those things and jobs that are going to begin em emerging that you can't even begin to foresee. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to correct you on one thing. Uh, Sears and Kmart are not victims of the Internet. Sears and Kmart are victims of Sears and Kmart. Well, Kmart yeah, was, they're not victims. Yeah, I was, yeah right. Yeah. They're not victims. K Kmart, Kmart has they, been sucking wind and going down the drain since the early 90s. And, and also, both all of these department stores that that are struggling, like even Bonton just announced it's going to be closing, they all JC had Penny. opportunity long ago to begin to convert over to the new internet commerce reality, and they chose not to. Well, not, not let's take a step. Not let's take a step further. What, what's the big thing about Sears and J.C. Penny going back to even even before we were young? What were Sears and J.C. Penny? Sears and J.C. Penney were the stores to go to. Well, Sears especially. Yeah, but, but but what about them? You could go they, to they you could go cheap. to the physical store, or you could go to the physical store. What was your other choice? You could go to a local store. Uh, no, like, uh, independently you, owned you, store. You you could go to the Sears store, or you could go to the Sears catalog. It was a catalog store. Mail order business, right? What is the internet if not a catalog store, a giant catalog store? Well, yeah. So if the if the internet was gonna if if a, the the digital catalog store was gonna put the mom and pop businesses out of business, you think that the that the hard copy catalog store would have done it? You know, people talk about Walmart's destroying local businesses. If you know, Walmart is, is relatively new as far as being nationwide. They've only they haven't been in Michigan that long. I mean, it, I remember when when Walmart first came to Michigan, and it wasn't that long ago. But if you say that that Walmart destroys small businesses, then why didn't Super Kmart do it back in the day? Why didn't Why didn't Meyer, which is a regional Michigan Midwest uh, Great Lakes uh, type store, that's I mean, it's almost indistinguishable. Yeah, from I've Walmart. never heard if, of it. If, yeah, but well, it's it, it's it's like a miniature version of Walmart. It's just in the Great Lakes areas, uh, but it's as a matter of fact, there's the first one just came into the Upper Peninsula uh, this, this past summer. But I mean, if you take if you take that down the signage, it's almost indistinguishable from a Walmart. You you can't tell the difference. Right. Well, yeah. The 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 the, the essential point here is these folks are well, they're 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 fighting windmills. They they can't stop what's coming. There's no way that UPS could possibly agree to this because if they agreed to it, the other shippers would totally destroy them because you can darn well bet they'll take full advantage of UPS not moving in these new technologies. In this case, the union wants to make the company less competitive. And that's, that's, here's, that's my point. They're, yeah, they're working yeah. against the in, they're working directly against the interest of the company. You can't do that. That's yeah. that's that's not two different parties coming together trying to find an amicable work outable arrangement where everybody feels like they got a decent deal. 
No, this is we will set we want to we want to sabotage your company rather than have people lose jobs. We want to sabotage our company. You, you remember uh, what was that uh, airline? Well, it's I not think it was Teamsters Easter. Company. I, I I think it was. Uh, well, is is uh, well without UPS, the Teamsters basically goes belly up because that's probably the last uh, large membership that they have. Everything else is is much smaller, but UPS is the largest uh, company that they're involved with. But um, going back, uh, the the joke that I have that goes along with this here is an American economist goes to China on a fact finding mission and he's going to look at a canal project there. And so he, he's out there and he sees these people and he doesn't see any modern machinery. No, no bulldozers, no steam shovels, no backhoes, none of this stuff. He sees people with hand tools, you know, they're, they're using shovels and hoes and, and rakes and all this other stuff. I just rig your hand tools. Like you, you go to Home Depot or you go to Walmart, Kmart, Meyer, these stores, and, and you buy hand tools there. And he's like, what's going on here? You know, what, what's, what's up with this? And, you, you know, why are your people using hand tools rather than modern machinery? And the, the, the Chinese delegation, they all get together and they huddle up and, and they're talking and talking. And, and finally, one of them comes back to the, comes back to the American economist and says, well, if we were to use the modern machinery, these peop- the, the people that are working this project here, their jobs would go away rather quickly and we wouldn't have anything f- for them to do. And the economist says, oh, say no more. It's a jobs program. Well, I tell you what, if, if you have more people that need to be employed and if you need to make sure that these jobs stay around for a good long time, take away their shovels and give them spoons. That's going to do it. That is, I mean, if you're going to go whole hog, if that's your, if you're doing a jobs program, use the spoons. The spoons is always the way. On that note, we're not going to go to a break because we don't have time. I want to try to get to both segments. So we're going to hit the second segment right now. I'm going to do the quick bump for it. And we're probably not going to do this long because we definitely want to make sure we get to the off the leash. Longer leash. Now we're going to longer leash. We're going to extend it a little for you. Here's the bump. How are coercive associations lengthening the leash on their pets? We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in lengthening the leash on those they presume to rule. All right, we're back. And we are ready for the longer leash story, which I think we're just going to have. We're just going to be able to touch on it uh, briefly. And because I want to make sure we get to the to the off the leash. We, we can't leave people on the longer leash. We have to get to the longer leash. I mean, to the off the leash. So if you're new to iState.tv, I'm going to set this story up. If you're new to iState.tv, sometimes... You might wonder exactly, what what does the title of this site actually mean? Maybe you don't even think about it. But if you do think about it, let me tell you right now, because it actually relates to this next news item. iState.tv is about the iState, which is the state of one, the state of I. And and when I say that, I'm, 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 when, I'm not referring just to myself. This isn't Paul's state. No, no, I state is referring to an idea. And the idea is that right now there are 7 billion plus I states out there, all waiting to declare their independence, all waiting to secede from the larger states around them. Well, here's a story of a move in that right direction. So in California, a dream deferred is now a, now a dream being revised. And that dream is the state of Jefferson. I don't know what you know about the state of Jefferson, but uh, it, it, it aims to separate parts of California from the urban centers that dominate the countryside with their politics. But now Jefferson has expanded, and the new state is to be called New California, which will include all of California, sons that tiny little strip where the mega cities reside, freeing the rest of California from the nanny state politics of the cities. 
So I'm, I, you probably have heard of Jefferson before, right? Thomas Jefferson? No, the the, the state of Jefferson. Or George or George Jefferson? No, no, no. Uh, yes, I, not... I I've heard of this state of Jefferson project. So so I guess back in 1941. Now the the art the 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 site. It's a, it's actually a Chinese site, Jean Huanet, where I excerpted from, and their title is rather interesting. They refer to them as right wing forces more eager than ever to split U.S. state of California. I don't know how many <laughs> of them are right wing. I mean, some of them probably are, but many of them are, are just like, dude, we're tired of your taxes and your crap and, and your gun control crap and. We're just tired of your crap. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that most of the folks in that group are actually, I think they're tired of your crappers. That's probably the political designation. I'm going to start that party. No, I'm not. I'm not going to start a political party. But if I was, I would start the party, the tired of your crappers. What is your, your political idea? I'm just tired of your crap, and I want you to stop it. That's, would you sign up? That sounds like a winning party. So I'm tired, I ain't taking it no more. Right. In 1941, uh, a small group of what they're calling right-wing forces carrying rifles stopped traffic in Northern California and told locals they were splittering off to become a new American state. Yet, World War II erupted months later, which stifled the movement, sad to say. Now we know what caused World War II. <laughs> they, they, had to st they had to stop the rise of the state of Jefferson. So 80 years later, there's there's a, I, I would call it a, I don't know, would you call it a semi-serious? Semi-serious? The most recent attempts by right-wing forces, again, with the right-wing thing, these are just tired of your crappers, really, are much more uh, ambitious than previous efforts, uh, said San Francisco businessman Glenn N N Nimhauser. I guess he's not interested in the rest of California uh, splitting from San Francisco because San Francisco is bleeding it dry. So he said, with the American president Donald Trump in office, they regard themselves as invincible. Maybe it's because you keep passing new taxes and new gun regulations and weird, like they got, I think they passed legislation recently that they, they, yeah, you can't sell any more gas cars by like twenty thirty or whenever it is. You know, they're just don't don't forget six months in jail if a waiter offers a plastic straw unsolicited. That, that one I don't think is going to pass, but they tried. I think the blowback from that, even they were like, mm, for maybe. for that idea to even come up. Oh yes, absolutely. That 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 was a serious consideration. They're like, hey man, I think we conditioned them enough. I think I think we can get this pass. And like, ooh, ooh, we were wrong. We were wrong. So so now they want to start the the and, and it's a good start. It's great. It's a good start. But it's but it's not seven billion I states. It's still any anything of a secessionist nature. Like I regularly follow what's going on in Catalonia. Catalon Catalonia wants to secede from Spain. I'm following what's going on with uh, Rahava, Somaliland. There are other secessionist groups and movements of various sizes and various effectiveness going on in the world. And wherever I can, I try to follow them because I'm all about secession. I don't know if you have anything more to say. I think we can. I think we can get to the long, to the to the, to the to the off the leash segment. I am not really optimistic because what they're going to do is they're going to use the same thinking to solve their problems that was used to create their problem in the first place. Let me guess. They're, they're going to secede from the abusive central power known as the state of California, and they're going to create their own limited government, and they're going to have a – they're going to create their own little state constitution and – of course, uh, with the very first day that, that the go new government is in session, they're going to start passing new laws and new laws. And in a fraction of the time that it took the USSA to become the Leviathan that it is today, the state of New California will look like the probably re Republican version of old California. Yeah, that's why they're in the longer lease segment, because the longer leash always ends yeah. up with 
with the a same shorter leash. Or, or even more control. Yeah. And just, so in our words, they're, they're looking at the six-foot leash that they're currently wearing and they're thinking, you know what, that 72-inch leash is looking pretty good right now. And because they're 72 inches, that's well, a lot more than six feet. Way more than six feet. Absolutely. Absolutely a lot. I don't even know what it is in centimeters, but I think centimeters would increase that by a lot. Well, it's only it's only two yards, and nobody wants two. No, you don't. Two want is two a yards. two, two yards is a very is... low number. That's that's seven. That's seventy less than seventy two. Yeah, two yards is moving in the wrong direction. You want to move towards seventy two inches. I'll just yeah. say that I want to say this, and then we can we got to get to off the leash. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm highlighting. Okay, there's a session. You're talking about getting smaller. Smaller is not necessarily bigger. I just want to point out, I learned this, actually, I just learned this on the show last night with Bodie on Is Daily Wednesday. We were talking about what's going on in Switzerland with their passing animal rights laws. You can no longer, yeah, you have to taser or stun your lobster before you drop the lobster into the water uh, because they're saying <laughs> lobsters have pain. <laughs> well, <laughs> They have a law that if you own a guinea pig, you must own two guinea pigs. And Switzerland is a lot smaller than California, and yet the degree of nanny statedness about Switzerland, it seems to be at least on par, if not possibly higher. So small but, but, states. But the cantons. Right. But small states, <laughs> small states are more than capable of being just as hyper nanny statey as large states. And I think that would be your point. OK, great. You're going to separate from California. But yeah, that doesn't mean anything in and of itself. If you don't have the underlying philosophy of no coercion, I'll say uh, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a the problem. Reals the real size of a state is not measured in the number of square miles or the number of politicians or government employees there are. The, the true size of a state is measured in the ability to enforce the coercion. Yeah. So when people say that they want a strong but small government, it doesn't matter how small it is. If it's strong enough to force you into subservience, that's big. Was it on your show last night? I, I mean, I've heard this phrase before, but it bears repeating where you say, you know, if, if you're rooting for a state to have the the power to oh, protect oh. your freedom, yeah. it yeah. has when, the power people, to take it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's based upon Thomas Jefferson, a government that's strong enough to give you everything that you want is also strong enough to take it all away. So you have these people that say that the only legitimate purpose of a government is to protect your liberty. Well, it stands to reason that a government that is strong enough to protect your liberty is also strong enough to take it all away. Now, you can hope that they'll be nice and use their powers only for good, but what's the <laughs> track like What's the track Yeah, what's the track states. record for that? Yeah. <laughs> Not good. What's the Not track a lot of Spider-Man the, states. Yeah. So I mean, th that's not the nature of government, and that's why the, this night watchman state that people envision has has turned into the into the police brutality state. Yeah, because the night watchmen that you envision are not actually going to be attracted to the positions of power. That takes right. a lot of work and energy and manipulation and knife thrusting to get into those positions. The night watchmen are not interested. The people who want power. And I'll say coercive power. The people who want coercive power, they're the ones that are attracted to, to fulfill those positions. So I want to. I want to. Got a couple of comments here from Ty. Ty said, "People also got to not conflate a monolithic state nation, or nation state, with politicians to local small communities of direct democracy." of contents consensus yeah and that's like that's what kind of what's happening over there in rahava i don't know how perfectly they are following it but uh rahava is trying to build a stateless confederation of of these small communities of of direct democracy and 
Yeah, that that's just a form of governance. If if there's no coercion involved, I got no issue with governance. But the problem is that New California is not per, not proposing non consent, not non coercion. Yeah, yeah, they're not looking for a voluntary society in any any way, shape, or form. Nope, 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 nope. No, nope. not just nope, nope, but Susanna Rickard. Nope. No, no, no. Whoa, what's that record? I I don't know that one. <laughs> What's what's that? You know her, Susanna. No, Susanna Rickard. Nope. I don't know her. She's in the Foodies Group. Oh, oh, okay. You're okay. You're doing a Facebook reference. Okay, that's yeah. That's you threw me off there. It's also a goat note. Nope, no, no. Nope. Well, I'm gonna hit the bump for the off the leash because we're gonna go late. We usually do go late, don't we? <laughs> So I'm, <laughs> every I'm, freaking time, <laughs> every freaking time, man. So segment three, we're finally going off the leash. Did you want to make any sound effect or anything before I hit this bump? Off the leash. Off the leash. How are others enjoying lives that exist beyond the reach of the leash of the state, the government? The course of enterprise, the course of association. How, in other words, are people living off the leash and how might you join them? We're here. And ladies and gentlemen, we took you through, you know, I, I like that the, the last show of the week ends with this segment. So it's like, is daily is one big show Monday through Thursday there's really nine seg. Oh, no, no, nine. There's twelve segments, and all of them work up to this one, off <laughs> the leash. So for for off the leash, I have selected this story. And did did you read over this story? Yes, I did. But because it's, I, I'm I'm not a. I'm a Luddite in my lack of knowledge. It's not my op. It's not no, an not opposition of knowledge. I'm not, I'm not super tech savvy. Yeah, I'm not super okay. tech savvy. Yeah, you're not super tech savvy, but you understand the principles that we're yes. going to talk about here. And that's why I, I did think about that. It's like, yeah, Lou's not really cryptocurrency guy. But I, I think, I, I obviously, I know you get the, the, the principles that we're talking about. And that's what I'm much more interested in. So this, uh, this is about Bitcoin, which is not the dark web coin. Uh, not anymore. It, that would that be would Monero. Be Monero. Now, I want to say before I go on, I want to say I'm I'm gonna it's gonna take me a little bit to get this in my head. I don't know if anybody wants to follow my example, but when I'm talking about this so-called dark web or this deep web, I think those labels. I don't know whether they emerge from the folks who are actually using this particular part or aspect of interwebbing if they chose those or those labels were chosen, but I'm going to choose another term and I'm going to designate this term to describe any type of interwebs in which it is impossible or really, really difficult for coercive enterprises to track what's going on. I'm going to refer to that type of interweb as a Liberty web because that's positive because that's what we're talking yeah. about here. It's not a dark web. It's not a, deep web it's a freaking liberty web and people are losing their freaking minds over the liberty webs so it, it even in this story that i highlight here the the writer his name is vikas shukla i'm calling you out by name vikas and i would say that you are either blissfully unaware of the work that you're doing to help advance this this narrative of fear uh, the, that I believe the course of enterprise wants to rely on to scare people away from anonymous empowering technologies like Liberty Webs, or or you're actually a willing partner in what I'm I'm calling a crime against human liberty. And I'm you know me I'm not given to hyperbole, so <laughs> 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 you know that's that's not me. Uh, yeah, and I'm not long winded. Oh no, I'm not long winded either. So the major... I'm not long winded. No, you're not. You know that's. You know it's amazing that we can do a show together because we're both. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both just at times we're like, okay, it's his turn. I'm just gonna sit back. Go ahead, because I know he has to. 
<laughs> he has to get it out. I, I'm not even trying. So, the, the but the major point of the article is that uh, something that what's interesting is he's writing about this like this is some new discovery, and and w what he's writing about is there's something called chainalysis. Have you ever heard of chainalysis? Yes, I have. When I read this article earlier. Yeah, chain analysis. Now, when I, you... I may have heard of it before. It's it's a private company that's been hired by law enforcement to track uh, transactions in the illicit markets created by government prohibitions. So basically, these rent-seeking parasites are taking that, advantage that's about of good things that description. Yeah, they're, they're taking advantage of the that of the fact that vegetation has been made illegal, along with many other things, and they're trying to track the cryptocurrency transactions and the sales so that they can turn this in so that they can sell this information over to law enforcement so that law enforcement can go in there and do civil asset forfeiture in order to pay the rent seekers to find more information so that the cops can do more civil asset forfeiture so that they can pay the rent seekers to go find more people they're blockchain spooks literally blockchain spooks and 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 they're actually paid in advance also to to do this work to and it's not just the liberty webs it's all the webs they're tracking yes. the basically they're they're yeah they're blockchain spooks they're like you know they're like road pirates except they don't get in their cars they they get in their their blockchains i know that's probably a terrible analogy but are are, are they in the unmarked cards cars that make it easier for them to hunt oh yeah, where it's white on white, right? Yeah, which is racist, by the way. So <laughs> all of those types white of on, vehicles, white on white stuff. violence. Uh, the, the, yeah, white on white violence. Now the reason that this is in off the chain is because if you might be looking at this and you might be thinking, oh, why, why is this in off the off off the leash? It, this shows the fact that 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 chainalysis exists. The fact that uh, that this guy, this little state von state face dude, is writing about how Chinalysis has somehow recently discovered that Monero is the is the privacy coin of choice in the Liberty Web. I think most people knew that long, long ago, and they're just now getting. I knew it. that. You knew that, and they're just now getting it. And they paid this company, whatever they paid this company to discover this. These folks are so far behind. Yes, sadly, during this transition, sadly, you, that you're going to have casualties. You know, like, uh, uh, oh, what's his face? Come on, uh, pirate dude. Come on. Oh, Dread Pirate, Pirate Roberts. Yeah. Ross uh, Ulbricht. Yeah, Russ Ulbricht. You, you, you're going to have casualties. They're going to, they, 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 like they have recently with, I think it was called, is it called Alphabet City? It was, a, it was a big Liberty Web hub where people were doing transactions. They took this whole hub out. They infiltrated. They took the whole hub out. They had, they arrested one of the guys, and then shortly afterwards, what do you know, the guy ended up, quote, killing himself in prison. So, yeah, there's going to be casualties, and they're going to have their visible victories here and there, but they can't, they can't even begin to scratch the surface of all the stuff that's going on. Just like last night, uh, I was talking with Niz, and I, and I put out the theory, if they've discovered Monero, trust me, there's, there's already there replacement. I... There's already there's already yeah. a replacement for Monero. Yeah, there are coins out there that I'm sure that you've never heard of. And yeah. uh, as our friend Jer as our friend Jeremy Hamburgler says, government is always a lagging indicator, and so are contractors employed by governments. Right. So so this is this is encouraging. I mean, it's not not encouraging for the the people that they're going to be able to pick off. Here and there, the ones they're going to try to make examples of, but it's it's it is it is off the leash in the sense that they they can't stop it, they can't control it. Uh, I I talked about a story 
just today and headlines you may have missed. Oh, I didn't get to that story. It was on the list. And I didn't even get to it because so many things going on. I didn't get to this story about Europe where the uh, European Commission came together to assess how do they address the blockchain? How do they address cryptocurrencies? They, they kind of believe they understand cryptocurrencies enough to regulate them now. I, I, I think they might be wrong about that. But, but, they, but they have freely admitted that the blockchain, they don't even understand it. So if they don't understand it, they don't know how to regulate it. So they're recommending that you don't get too aggressive with, re with regulating the blockchain because you, you have no idea uh, how it's going to evolve and whether your regulations, your work will have any effect somewhere down the road. I'm telling you, they are the, the, their biggest calling card or, or their biggest uh, trump card, I'll say, not calling card, trump card, is if – if they can somehow convince people to simply not use the technologies and they can't do it through coercion, they can't do it through laws, through regulations. It has to be something that they condition people. It's like, you know, if you, if you do, if you go on the blockchain, if you use cryptocurrencies, you're helping terrorists. It's got to be something like that. That's their only if, hope. If you use currencies, next thing you know, the white women will be having sex with with the shifty Negro musicians. Right. And smoking yeah. the devil's cabbage. The devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce, too. Don't don't Whichever. use the devil's coin. Don't. Don't use the devil's coin because then they'll be smoking the devil's lettuce. And you don't yeah. want that because if that happens, white women, then White women and lost. black musicians. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that. I... I don't, I don't know if you have anything more to say. I think we went out on a good note. Do you have anything to add to this? Uh... My prediction is yet another failure. How so? Uh, the, the coercive enterprise will attempt to control something that it does not understand. It's going to end like everything else does, and this is just going to be another, uh, another uh, notch in their failure belt. Yeah. That's my prediction as well. The, the, the time is running out. The greatest hope that they have is if they can create some sort of ideational power over you to convince you to reject the technologies, the self-empowering, well, yeah, yeah, self-empowering, uh, anonymous creating technologies that are on the rise. And blockchain is just one of the things. That's why... Again, if you go to iState.tv, more than half of the content is about technology. Now, what, one of the beautiful things and why I don't think that they're going to be overly successful is because the credibility of government is really, really swirling the bowl. I mean, it, it, it is very poor. And quite frankly, the, the, the ones that are going to take heed to the, to the warnings about the devil's coin are probably going to be people in their 60s and 70s that watch Fox News, CNN. Uh, that, probably, anyway. that, that probably weren't going to be using the devil's coin to begin with. So you get these young kids out there, and even the goody, the goody goody ones, they're of the mind of, oh, wait, the government told me not to use devil coin? Hey, let's use devil coin. Let's take a look and see what <laughs> right. it is. Ooh, that and, sounds but, great. By an alt I mean, ultimately, pe people really don't they, – they don't put a whole faith in what the government says. They, they do believe in technology for the most part with the exception of these old farts. And even some of the old farts uh, are, are technologically inclined and savvy. So I, I, I just see this as um, another way to get ignored. You know what? Government trying to control things is like a – really skeezy, obnoxious guy trying to hit on a chick and she keeps turning them down and their attempts to regulate and control more things are just more cheap pickup lines that get shot down. I, I don't know if I fully agree with you, but I think, I think you might very, I lean towards thinking you might be right. I'm not totally convinced that there isn't, there is it. Well, I'm, I'm convinced there's a, huge portion that will will look at these as cheap pickup lines but then there's still another portion of folks that uh their identity is wrapped up in this stuff and i think now they'll be hypocrites don't get me wrong because they will outwardly disavow themselves of the devil's coin but in secret they'll be using it 
<laughs> how, how, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be like weed. People are going to realize that, no, weed isn't really the devil's lettuce like it was advertised. Uh, it, it has medicinal values. No, you're not going to be freaking out and doing crazy stuff if you if you inject the devil's lettuce. Uh, I, the, the, the whole reefer madness is... is it, it, I mean, people know that it's BS now, and I think I think they're going to catch on a little bit quicker to the crypto madness. Yeah, I think that's a good place to end things. Um, uh, I will not be doing. Remember, headlines you may have missed uh, is Monday through Thursday. Now it's not Monday through Friday, just Monday through Thursday, because tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to be working on. Actually, I'm going to be working on this show. And headlines you may have missed are going to be working on trying to get reliable audio podcast feeds connected to all the, oh, you know, Stitcher and iTunes and all that. That that That's the big thing that I'm going to be working on tomorrow. And this show, I do have a link to the show notes for, for this show. And if you maybe by tomorrow morning, maybe by tonight, depending on how uh, technology goes, You'll be able to go to that page and you'll be able to get the audio version. You'll see the Facebook version and the YouTube version. You can decide how you want to watch it or whether you just want to listen to it. And I'll be back Monday, 1230 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Paul Gordon Facebook page. That's my personal Facebook page. So if you want to make sure you watch the show, friend request me. And if you're if you're if your page isn't totally like complete i mean not if you're stadium on state face that's okay but if you're like completely full on like you know worshiping the flag or whatever stadium on state face probably going to reject you uh or if or if you just have nothing but pictures of nude cats probably also gonna reject you and then and then monday night it's uh professor rambo and myself on is daily monday where we'll be talking guns world news and prepper stuff do you have any last uh comments before we shut this 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 i guess this two pony show down <laughs> uh it was another enjoyable show uh a little bit of a selfless shame promotion here oh yes you can oh, totally you can catch that. me you can catch me Wednesday night on the Freedom Fiends radio show. You can stream it live on GCNlive.com or LRN.FM. It will be at 1 a.m. Eastern time. So I, I guess that's technically Thursday morning. But anyway. Yeah, I, never, I never listen to it live. It's my breakfast show. Yeah. Or you can catch the podcast the next morning at freedomfiends.com. Yep. But I will be doing a solo show and talking about Frederick Bastiat and the law. It's Bastia. Je it's suis Bastia. American. Je suis American. Je ne parle pas français. <laughs> okay. Le mieux, le mieux, le mieux. And, and, well, before we leave, why don't you also mention something else that's coming up in June? Ah, yes. Got to get that out. The 6th Annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest will be held at the Circle Pine Center in Delton, Michigan, just outside of Kalamazoo, from Thursday, June 21st through Monday, June 25th. The uh, scheduled speakers. speakers include Dana Martin, Prof. CJ of the Dangerous History Podcast, uh, Brett Bonat of the School Sucks Project, or is it School Sucks Project? It's both. Or, School Sucks yeah, Project it's, it's and both. Podcast. It's both. Yeah. It's both. Yeah. yeah. And dun, 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 Scott Horton of Antiwar.com and author of Fool's Errand. Yeah, and he and does that's a podcast, a book although I, I don't yeah. know if he's done one in a while, but but he does do podcasts as well. Yeah. And for me, I'll just self-promote, go to iState.tv, and you'll get everything. You'll get all the shows that I do, that I, that I do with others, including with Lou here, and you get lots and lots of content. I aggregate the news, I write articles, it's a combination of stuff, but you go there and you'll see awareness, hope, action. Give you a, a little awareness of the Stady von Stateface nightmare world around you, but introduce you to hope because there's all kinds of things happening that give you hope. You don't have to live in fear porn land. And then finally, I try to highlight ways that uh, people are actually taking action that demonstrate liberty right where they are. So be sure you go to iState.tv and 
We'll see you guys. Well, on is on is daily Thursday. We will see you next Thursday my, with both Lucander and myself at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principal Facebook page. Good night, everybody. Good night.